Hello and welcome. In today's video, I am analyzing ICICI Lombard General Insurance Company Limited. The company is engaged in the business of offering wide range of general insurance products which covers fire, marine and other classes of insurance. I'll be analyzing fundamental data of this company and then compare it with its peer group company. This will be a short video. Market cap currently for this company stands at 61,644 crores. The market cap three years back, the data is not available for both three and five years because the company has just been listed a year or two back. Current price is 1,356 rupees. The highest it had reached was uh, in last one year was 1,440 and lowest was 805. So it is nearing very much near to its highest point that it had reached. The current price to earning is quite expensive at 44 times and the book value is 154 rupees. So it is trading at a very high premium even for price earning as well as price book both. Because the current price is 1356 and the book value is just 154 rupees. So we are paying a very hefty premium to buy this company as of today. Dividend yield is just 0.26%. Return on capital employed and ROE both are about 20% in the latest year. Face value is 10. The book value three years back was 100 rupees which has now moved to 154. But yet it is very expensive price to book wise. The number of equity shares outstanding in the market is 45 crore shares and its operating margin or profit margin for the last 5 years on average has been 5.63% whereas the net profit margin earlier uh, we saw that uh, rather the book value we saw was quite expensive. Return over last 1 year is hardly anything not even 1%. Over the last three years, it has generated a return of around 25% on a compounded basis. So it has given a good return to the investors. Debt on the company's books is 485 crores, which three years back also was around 485 crores. So there is no increase in the number of amount of borrowings. We will ignore the interest cost it's zero right now showing, but when we go to peer group analysis, we will look at that. The debtor days is 249. This also we'll look at later on. Investments in the company's books is around 29,162 crores. So out of 61,000 crores of market cap, investments are 29,000 crores. Company's cash holding is very low at just 26 crores. There are no receivables and payables as this is this company is into insurance business. Working capital is negative 22,000 crores that is their liabilities are or current liabilities rather are higher than their current assets. The total assets on the company's books or net assets are 654 crores. So quite a 654 crores is not that high, high value when compared to the investments and the balance sheet size. Three years back also it was uh, so from three years back it has almost doubled in size of assets. Total balance sheet size is 38,345 crores. So if you want to value it uh, in terms of or against the balance sheet total. So for 38,000 crores of balance sheet we are paying 61,000 crores so almost 2x than the balance sheet size. Debt to profit is 0. Point, so there is no hardly any debt on the company's book. So even this debt that we saw earlier, which was around 485 crores, in, in fact the profit uh, profit is more than the debt. Debt is half, almost half of the profit that it earned in one year. So it can very easily pay off the uh, uh, debt using the profit of just one year itself. And therefore we see here earlier that there was no interest cost on the company's balance sheet. So this is good. So this debt itself is also very small. The market cap is around 5.3 times higher than the revenue generated in uh, 2020. So this is also quite expensive. So valuation wise definitely it is expensive because the returns that it is generating is quite high. 
the profit after tax of the last 5 years in total is around 3972 crores whereas the cash earned from the operations or operating activity is around 10938 crores and it still has a free cash flow of almost 10339 crores so there's hardly any investments in fixed assets out of the cash earned over the years so this concludes the basic core analysis now let us move on and look at next let us look at the price chart of the company currently the price is above its 200 days moving average line on a daily basis so this is a bullish signal as of today we can see that whenever it falls below the its uh, 200 day moving average that's a good time to buy into the company here earlier in march 2020 it had fallen quite substantially from its moving average and then it has recovered back and has been trailing its two or moving along its 200 day moving average line if you look at the price to earning it's currently at around 44.4 times and it has been fluctuating quite uh, quite a lot over the years this data represents around 3 years of data the lowest it had reached was around 35.7 uh, in december uh, 2018 where it has around 35 times that is the price was around 35 times higher than the profits so we can take this or the median price earning as our target pe or whenever it goes below its median price earning value or average price earning value of the last 3 years we can take that as our basic criteria for price earning instead of keeping it at 25 times fixed so currently its median pe or uh, rather say somewhere between 40 above 45 and the current price earning is 44 times so we are getting it below its uh, median line or median price earning of last 3 years which is approximately 47 if you have to look at the operating profit margin and the net profit margin along with sales so it has done a sales in the latest 30th september quarter of around 2994 crores and earned a net profit margin of 13% and whereas the opm was around 18.1% so we can see that it has managed a good returns of opm and npm as well as the quarterly sales uh, figure of the last 3 years highest uh, till date whereas it has been increasing in in its revenue generation so that's a good sign the lowest uh, opm and npm that it had earned was in march 19 somewhere around 11.78% of opm and uh, net profit margin of 8.69% but then since then it has recovered let us look at its positives and negatives the company is almost debt free as we saw earlier company has been maintaining a healthy dividend payout of approximately around 18% the negatives are that the stock is trading very expensive at 8.8 times its book value its debt days are very high at 248 days this we'll have to check out why it, uh, it has to why it is taking so many days to collect payment from its customers promoter holding has decreased over the last 3 years by around 4% approximately moving on let us compare icici lombard with general insurance and maybe we'll take up since uh, let us look at its net worth first and then see where we can compare it with or what we can compare which companies we can compare it with so this is a 7000 crore company whereas general insurance is 27000 crore so it's a, a huge uh, against that so what we'll do is we'll compare icici lombard with sbi life insurance and hdfc life insurance just to see how it matches up with these two companies although their business model may differ a little bit one could be general one could be life and so on so they could have different business models but as of now for uh, comparison sake since all of them are in insurance business whether they may have sub categories but i'm considering that they are into insurance business so we'll compare icici lombard with sbi life insurance and hdfc life insurance 
it's around 5.84 percent down from its 52 week highest point whereas sbi is down by around 17 percent and hdfc is down by just two percent so both hdfc and icici lombard both are almost nearing their 52 week highest point the results for all three companies are up to date till uh, september 2020 and annually it's up to date till march 2020 Sales generated by Lombard was around 3,000 crores approximately in this quarter of September 2020 and in the previous quarter it was around 2,854 crores. That's a 4.93% increase in the revenue generated. But when we look at the SBI life, it's gained by around 44% from its previous year's quarter from 12,000 crores to 18,000 crores. Whereas HDFC Life has generated almost 88% more revenue from its previous year's quarter from 8,700 to 16,500 crores. When we look at the net profit, ICICI Lombard's net profit has gained by around 35% from 307 crores on a quarterly basis to 415 crores. Whereas SBI Life has gained around 130% from 129 to 299 crores and hdfc life has also increased managed to increase its profit margin uh, on a quarterly basis by 6.1 percent looking at the sales of 2020 against uh, the recent 12 months icsi lombard's 2020 total revenue generated was around 12,500 crores approximately which has decreased in the recent 12 months to 11,600 SBI Life has in fact increased its sales from 43,700 crores to 56,000 crores. Even HDFC Life has managed to increase within these uh, recent 12 months uh, from 29,000 crores to 43,000 crores. So we see that ICICI has not in fact the overall revenue has decreased uh, against what SBI Life and HDFC Life has managed. Sales value is very important to look at. Or the revenue that it generates is very important to look at profits has increased although from one 1194 crores to 1389 in the recent 12 months even uh, sbi life has managed to increase their profit from 1400 to 1600 and hdfc from 1200 to 1300 crores so all three companies have managed to increase their profits although revenue wise Looking at the profits of 2020 and comparing, comparing it with the cash earned, 1,194 crores of profit in 2020 and the cash generated was 3,432 crores. So this is good, like almost 3x more cash generated. For SBI Life, 1,400 of profits declared but cash generated of almost 19,000 crores. So if someone is interested, they can go into more detail by checking out the cash flow statement. HDFC life insurance has also managed almost 7x more cash. So we can see that both HDFC and SBI are more efficient in terms of cash generation than Lombard. Five years price earning very expensive all three companies 68 times more we have, we have to pay over an average of if you look at the last five and three years and the current price earning is mind-boggling 99 times more so we were, it's most expensive as of uh, uh, when price to earning is considered if you just ignore general insurance price earning uh, here sbi life is quoting at around 52 times so considering these two now this looks very low 44 times earlier when we looked at a standalone basis this also looked very high but now when we compare it with SBI Life, where they are trading price earning wise, this is quite low. Now quite understandably because their its values or fundamental numbers are also low compared to SBI and HDFC. But I fail to understand why would even investors give such high premium valuations to these companies. Price to cash wise, which is more important than price to earning. All three companies are trading at a good below 25 times multiple. So even if we ignore price earning and just purely go by price to cash also, all three companies are generating huge cash and the best value is for SBI Life at just 4.38 times. 
that is uh, the price current price is just 4.3 times higher than the cash it is generating per share whereas Lombard is at around 17 times and HDFC at 18 times price book wise HDFC is quoting at a very hefty premium of 17 times its book value or net worth whereas SBI is at 8 times even ICICI Lombard is at around 8.8 .8 times all three companies trading at an extreme price to book as well let's look at the growth in profit over five years and last three years Lombard has managed 23 percent growth rate in its revenue generation over last three years and f in five years it's 15 percent growth whereas SBI life has managed 11 and 14 percent in fact all of these three companies have managed almost double digit growth rate in their profits over the last five and three years in terms of sales Lombard has managed 24 and 26 percent of growth rate in its revenue generation over the last five and three years even SBI life has managed a double digit growth rate in its revenue generation HDFC has seen some stagnation in terms of generating revenue from where they were five and three years back in fact the revenue oh, has decreased or has it seen a degrowth from where it was three years back around one percent compounded so there seems to be some stagnation happening in the HDFC life insurance in terms of return on equity over five years and last three years all three companies have generated above 15 percent of ROE as well as ROC about 20 percent so all three companies are highly profitable ones that is on their equity value or their capital employed into the business the generating good returns or profitability is very good for all of these three companies in the recent year Lombard has generated around 20 percent return on equity and 28 percent in on ROCE or capital employed so all these three companies are doing well return on assets or total assets employed against that what is the profitability is one percent for HDFC and life insurance whereas Lombard uh, values are showing as 19 percent so this, this needs to be verified because on a very small balance sheet size they are generating huge amount of profits this can this should be re-verified like all of these numbers which are off the peer group table then those needs to be re-verified asset turnover that is how much revenue it's generating on the asset it has it's generating around 1.9 times higher than uh, in terms of profits the profits are around 1.9 times higher than the asset it owns whereas SBI and HDFC both are generating much better returns on the assets in terms of revenue generation of 5 times and 4.3 times for HDFC and 5 times for SBI life insurance if you look at the 5 years data of profit and cash flow as well as free cash flow Lombard has generated around 3900 crores in profits 10,900 crores in terms of cash and almost 10,000 crores of cash still pending as free cash which can be used to pay off dividend or pay off loans etc or give bonus or buyback or whatever SBI life has generated 5,600 crores of profits but 57,000 10x here this is just 3x but SBI has generated 10x more returns in terms of cash and almost all of it it still has as free cash even HDFC has generated almost eight to nine times almost seven times its profits uh, against the cash as well as it still has a substantial portion of cash left with them on an average HDFC is generating around 1000 crores of profit every year since last five years and SBI life is generating around 1100 uh, Lombard's profitability is slightly low at 794 crores although net worth wise all of these three companies are almost the same but market cap wise if you see 61,000 crores is the market value given to ICICI Lombard 84,000 crores to SBI life and almost 1,34,000 we saw earlier that price to book wise it was quite expensive so just 7,800 crores of net worth but in the market people have given it extremely high valuations of 1,34,000 crores in terms of contingent liability 
against the net worth 2100 crores of contingent liability against net worth of 7800 quite high according to me which is uh, almost 30 uh, percent or so so this is considered slightly high anything about 20 percent is considered high but depending on the quality of the company we can ignore this sbi life is around on a net worth of 9600 crore 1100 crores of contingent liability again this also is high in fact all of these three companies uh, in fact icci lombardy is quite low at 564 crores again against the 7000 crores of net worth none of these companies have a substantial debt on their even less than 1% not even less than 0.1% of debt for all these three companies promoter holding for all the three companies is above 50% no pledge by any of these three companies here day to day is we can ignore uh, as uh, we earlier saw that it doesn't have any debtors as such so whatever nominal it may be they may write it off or something like that since these companies generally don't have debtors or cust uh, customers as such so this could be an one off net profit margin hdfc and sbi both are working at a very low profitability margin of around 4 and 3% whereas uh, Lombard is managing around almost 9.5%. None of these companies are paying any dividend to its shareholders. So this concludes my detailed analysis of ICICI Lombard with SBI Life Insurance and HDFC Life Insurance. If you like this video, do share and subscribe with your friends. Thank you for watching this video.